ancient flying beasts, the pterosaurs. Some of you may more commonly know them as the pterodactyls, the original flying creatures of our planet, starring in some of Hollywood's biggest films like Jurassic Park and the original King Kong. For centuries, humans have dreamed of soaring through the skies, and relatively recently, we acquired this in the form of aircraft, and even more recently, through the use of inventions like the wingsuit. Looking more closely at these wingsuits gives us a great idea of how the pterosaurs would have ventured through the air. In this video, we will go over the mechanics of how these ancient reptiles flew, and how they really would have looked if you were to look to the skies and see these interesting creatures. Let's get to it! After first being discovered in the 18th century, over 200 species of pterosaur have been discovered. However, we know that this is merely a small fraction of the total amounts of species within the pterosaur family. The first pterosaurs appeared around 230 million years ago, where we believe tree-living reptiles jumped from tree to tree, eventually evolving wings. And they stayed in existence, all the way to the time when all the ancient reptiles just disappeared. For 162 million years, they were the kings and queens of the sky. Being around for that much time brought out a buttload of variation amongst the pterosaur family. Some say that there was as much variety in the flying reptiles as there is today with birds. Some like the Quetzalcoatlus was as big as a small plane, with a wingspan of 35 feet or over 10 meters and was as tall as a giraffe while others were as small as a house sparrow. There was even a type that resembled the flying reptiles known as Ikron from the film Avatar, thus earning the name Ikron Draco. One thing that all these creatures had in common though was strong, muscular bodies that were perfect for launching their frames into the sky and continuing flight for at times thousands of miles as massive migrations were common with the pterosaurs. Cue the main feature of the pterosaurs, their impressive wings. Pterosaur wings were made up of three layers, the top being made out of fan-like fibers that would aid in folding the wings for when the beast was flapping or settling in for a nice bit of rest on the land. The middle layer was full of connective tissues and muscles, and the third final layer was composed of the vascular system, making sure enough blood constantly was flowing through their wings. A fourth finger would extend the length of the top part of the wing giving the majority of the support to the rest of the wing, while on the bottom there was a ligament that helped prevent fluttering and to maintain the lift required to keep the beast high in the sky. While there was extreme variety in the way pterosaurs looked, the wings of these creatures normally stayed consistent, stretching from the tip of that fourth finger all the way down to the body and finally connecting to the ankle. See the similarities with the wingsuit starting to make a bit more sense? This type of wing design was especially useful for gliding massive distances with as few flaps of the wings as possible. To do this for thousands of miles, you need to be very light, with most of the smaller pterosaurs weighing less than 100 pounds, and even the mighty plane-sized Quetzalcoatlus only weighing about 450 pounds. With this light weight, great aerial distances could be achieved which is perfect because the pterosaurs would fly thousands of miles to find their old mating grounds or where they were going to lay their eggs. Pterosaur bones were very thin and even more hollow than birds, filled with air sacs to help maintain flight and thin bony struts that acted like braces for the thin bones. These animals evolved to be the best they could be at flying. Below the neck, most pterosaurs looked rather similar. Above it though, was a whole nother game. A crazy statistic is that most pterosaurs had necks and heads that would combine to be three to four times larger than the rest of their body. Just imagine it, nothing but wings and a big giant death head. <laughs> the skulls of these creatures were really the money makers for the pterosaur. Specially evolved for hunting, feeding, and for the males, sexual purposes. Just like how you or your bros get all spiffed up to hopefully go pick up some chicks. Male pterosaurs would use their adapted skulls in hopes of attracting a proper mate. One of the more common of these features was a colored crest that usually stretched the top of the snout to the back of the skull. The ladies loved it. But there was still some unlucky guys out there who just couldn't find a mate. Oh, poor guy. Birds, insects, bats, 
humans, and the pterosaurs. The few creatures who have ever been able to soar through the sky for miles and miles. Only the pterosaurs are gone these days. They died out just like the dinosaurs and the rest of the ancient reptiles. But why? Well, no one really knows, but it was more than likely due to the extreme and sudden change in their climate and environment. You be around for hundreds of millions of years, the slightest little change in how you live may just kill off all of you. And that is probably what happened. Their legacy lives on, however, as more and more fossils are being discovered and many of the features they use for flight are still being used today. They may not have been dragons, but they were the kings of the flying reptiles. Before I go, I want to tell you guys about Primitive War, a novel about dinosaurs slamming into humanity in one epic and brutal confrontation. This story utilizes the more modern feathered dinosaur look and would be great for any of you who like action and dinosaurs. We recommend going and checking it out. Links to where you can get a copy in the description. I want to thank you all so much for dropping by for this video. We don't claim to be the best, but we really love to spread the discussion of Earth's ancient creatures and Earth itself. If you feel we deserve it, subscribe to our channel and go check out our Facebook page even. Become a resident of Dangerville today, guys. This has been Jacob, and peace out.